Hi, and welcome back to KO Design. This video is the third installment in the Learn Hand Lettering series. In this video, I will be teaching you how to connect letters. So if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I will link them in the description below. I have with me the usual supplies that I use for the videos. I have my lettering practice sheet. I have my piece of Yin Fang marker paper, as well as the Crayola Super Tips. And if you watch the basic strokes video, here are the basic strokes that we went over in that video, but you can also keep this sheet handy for reference if you need it. So I have three tips that you can use that'll help you when you are connecting letters and forming your words. So the first tip would be to adjust strokes as necessary. You may need to adjust the upstroke or even the downstroke in order to make the connection between the letters more fluid. So an example, I will show you of that will be connecting a C to an O. So with the C, I am going to extend the upstroke on the exit so that way it can connect to the O more fluidly because if you were to just draw your C like that it doesn't really connect to the O I mean you can draw the O right here but the connection is odd. So if you adjusted the upstroke on the C as you're completing the C and bring it more up, it's a little bit easier to connect your O to it. And I'll also try this with B and E. So the connection between the B and the E is okay, but I could have extended that connection. Well, not the connection. I could have extended that upstroke so that it connects with the E better.
So I brought this exit stroke of the beat out a little bit more to connect to the E. So this B, like the word B, and this B brings me to my second tip, which would be to keep spacing between the letters the same. So there's nothing wrong with the spacing in between these letters. The This first one is a little bit close, yes. And this one's a little bit more spaced out. But if I were to continue writing a word, I would want to keep the spacing the same between each of the letters. Because if you don't, the word can look slightly odd. So tip number two would be to keep spacing between letters the same or consistent. You want to keep them as similar as possible because if not, when you write the word, it could look like some parts of the word could look squashed and other parts can look more stretched out and you want the word to look as cohesive as possible. So what I'm going to do is write the same word twice. And the first time I write it, it will have inconsistent spacing. And the second time I write the word, it will have the same spacing in between each letter. So I just drew these pink lines in between each of the letters to show the spacing in between each letter. I'm gonna write it again and try and have a little bit more inconsistent spacing. I may have to write a longer word so that we're able to see the variation in the spacing. But here you can kind of see the spacing between the H and the E, the E and the first L, the L to the second L, it's about even, I would say. And then from this L to the O, it's not the same amount of space between these two letters and then these. So now with this pink marker, I'm just drawing the spacing in between all of the letters. So you can see like here, the C to the O, that spacing is pretty close. And then this here is wider. That there, in between the E and the N, is very wide.
Now the spacing won't be perfect because you aren't a computer, you're a human, but you can try to make the spacing as similar as humanly possible. So I don't know if you're able to tell uh, once I use this pink marker and put in the lines for the spaces, but this, the spacing is more consistent than it is up here. And the third tip, which is more so like a general tip for hand lettering, would be to lift up your pen or whatever marker that you are using. Lift it up as frequently as you need to. Don't feel like you have to continuously write without lifting up your marker. If you did that, that's more like handwriting, um, which is not what we're doing. We're hand lettering. So lifting up your pen allows you to form those letters better and be able to create an art form out of those letters. And to add on to this tip, once you start practicing forming your letters and connecting your letters, some letters and some groups of letters, you may be able to maintain proper pressure on the upstroke and the downstroke in one motion. So you don't have to lift it up after every stroke if you're comfortable with forming certain letters and certain groups of letters without lifting your pen. I know sometimes when I'm hand lettering, I feel like specifically with the Tombow uh, dual brush pens, certain pairs of letters, I'll say certain pairs of letters, I'm able to keep the pen just moving. And other times, I lift it up after every stroke. So it just depends on what kind of look you're going for and how comfortable you are with, you know, connecting your letters. And don't feel like you have to group certain letters together and do those in one continuous motion. It's whatever feels comfortable. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of different letter combinations of pairs of letters. And obviously there's so many pairs that can be produced from all the letters of the alphabet. I'm just showing you a couple of different ones. Since I've already done two of the pairs that I was going to show you down here, I will leave those ones out.
And remember, you can have different variations of certain letters. If you wanted to draw the letters with certain loops or certain flourishes, you are more than welcome to do so. I just wanna keep it simple just so you can see how the letters are connecting to each other. And you can also do double letters as well. These are L's. So here with the double S, I did not like those two S's together. So I did it again and just changed the style of S that I did. And you can do that too if you realize, like, ah, I don't really like how that came out, those two letters. You can kind of change up the style of them and... It makes them look better. So now with the pink marker, I'm just going to go in and mark where each of the letters are connecting to one another. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment below. If you're enjoying this series, consider subscribing and I will make more videos like this one. And remember to check the description box because I will link 
the previous two videos in the Learn Hand Lettering series. Thanks for watching.